there is Macbeth, the, the titular Macbeth, titular meaning of the title, and he is a Scottish nobleman, a, a lord, if you like, in, in sort of today's parlance, which means he's kind of born into privilege of some degree or another. He was probably moneyed and, and had a castle when he was sort of born into the family that he was born into. Uh, but he wants more. He strives for more power as the play goes on. And at the point that the play starts, he's a general in King Duncan's army. But his desire for power, strongly encouraged by his wife, Lady Macbeth, and by the prophecy of the witches, leads him to kill King Duncan and take the throne of Scotland for himself. And once he becomes king, he becomes increasingly ruthless, using murder and terror to hold onto his throne. Then you've got Lady Macbeth, and as I say, she is Macbeth's wife, and arguably she really drives the story along at the beginning through her ruthlessness and ambition. Uh, she is the one who encourages Macbeth to kill King Duncan along with the, the words of the witches, which who I'll speak of in a minute. Uh, and after the murder, though, she's filled with guilt and falls into madness and eventually takes her own life, arguably becoming a victim of her own misdeeds. As I say, there are the three witches as well who have a part to play in Macbeth and Lady Macbeth's downfall. They're arguably supernatural creatures, although that remains kind of mysterious. We're never, never told clearly whether or not their prophecies are actual prophecies that will come true or whether it's actually Macbeth's ambition that drives him to meet the things that they lay out for him. And they plot mischief against Macbeth. They predict that he'll become Thane of Cawdor and after that that he'll become the King of Scotland itself. And Mac Macbeth interprets their prophecies as a sign that he must kill King Duncan. I've mentioned King Duncan a few times. He is the King of Scotland at the beginning of the play. He's a good, generous ruler. Um, we kind of could see him as some sort of a father figure to Macbeth at the start. But of course, Macbeth murders King Duncan and takes the throne of Scotland for himself. One of Macbeth's close friends, certainly at the beginning of the play, is Banquo, uh, and he is a fellow general in the army, and as I say, he's also one of Macbeth's friends. And the witches make a prediction for him at the start of the play as well, and that's that his children will take the throne of Scotland. Now, Though they start friends, Macbeth sees this prophecy as a threat to his own power, to his own kingship. And by the end of the play, he has had Banquo murdered in order to put a stop to the possibility that his children will take the throne. But of course, he fails to murder the son of Banquo, Fleance, um, and that is his eventual downfall. Uh, but in terms of Banquo, Macbeth is, is haunted by visions of Banquo's ghost as the story develops. Fleance then is Banquo's son. He's destined by the witch's prophecy for the throne and he escapes Macbeth's attempt to have him murdered. Crucial to Macbeth's downfall is Macduff. He is another Scottish nobleman similar to Macbeth, and he leads the fight to remove Macbeth from the throne. Macbeth has Macduff's wife and son brutally murdered, and Macduff uses that as a spur to restore the throne to Duncan, King Duncan's family, Duncan's son Malcolm. Um, 
But he also has that desire, therefore, for the revenge, for the murder of his family. And then the last person that I'm going to tell you about is Malcolm. And Malcolm is King Duncan's son and the rightful heir to the throne after Duncan's death. He flees the country when Macbeth kills his father, but wins the support of the King of England and returns to Scotland with an army to claim his crown. If you want this information available in written form, then please check out our revision guide on the Twinkle website. There are also a number of other Macbeth revision videos available on the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.